let's take you live now to Port Hedland for that news conference with Anthony Albanese. Along with other commitments I made here in Western Australia, my government's determined to deliver each and every one of them. I said I'd visit the West ten times a year. Uh, this is my ninth visit in nine months. So I have three months to go to make that one extra visit. I'll be back here, by the way, in March, and I'll be back here in April. So we'll exceed uh, that target. But it's not just about making an appearance, it's about engaging. So I've been to Albany, I've been to Kalgoorlie, Boulder, I've been to Broome, I've been to Fitzroy Crossing, as well as uh, right throughout uh, the metropolitan area of Perth. And I'm working with the McGowan government to deliver, to deliver based upon the strong economy that West Australia is the driver of. And here in Port Hedland, of course, we see something like 4% of our GDP go through this port. Uh, it is a great wealth creator here in the Pilbara, and that's why my government is committing $565 million for upgrades to port infrastructure in the Pilbara. Uh, this will make an enormous difference. Uh, common use of facilities will be important for making sure uh, that there is access across the board uh, to the export and also to import facilities here at the port. Uh, today, uh, there will be uh, about 20 cabinet ministers, including the Treasurer and the Trade Minister and the Resources Minister and the Infrastructure Minister, and I'm joined here by uh, Catherine and Madeleine King from my team, as well as uh, Rita Safiotti uh, from the Premier's team. Uh, we're determined to make a difference, and throughout, not just uh, the days leading up to today but in following days as well this afternoon uh, Catherine will travel uh, with Rita to Fitzroy Crossing to look at the ongoing recovery there. Uh, we have ministers spreading uh, throughout Western Australia uh, visiting Caratha, visiting other communities and this morning uh, I had a meeting with uh, Senator Patrick Dodson with the traditional owners uh, throughout the Pilbara and a really constructive engagement. After the uh, cabinet meeting, we'll be having a community reception with 150 people uh, from the community sector, from the resources sector, from the business community, all wanting to engage with cabinet ministers. It is a good thing uh, to bring the cabinet out of Canberra. It's a commitment that I made. Uh, we'll also be having a cabinet meeting in Perth uh, later this year. Uh, my government is determined to represent the whole of Australia and I think I've visited uh, the West now as Prime Minister more in nine months than the previous Prime Ministers did in nine years. Uh, but I am particularly pleased to be here, always working hand in hand uh, with the McGowan Government. Yesterday we announced our new energy apprenticeships program on top of the 18,800 fee-free TAFE places will be providing $10,000 for up to 10000 new energy apprentices uh, to encourage them to go into uh, industries of the future. Uh, we're working closely as well. We announced uh, the National Broadband Network expansion of fibre uh, while I was in Kalgoorlie at the School of the Air. It's making a difference uh, to that School of the Air being able to provide education to those uh, young students on their stations. Uh, some of them 1,200 kilometres away uh, from Kalgoorlie. Uh, that is a part of the 180,000 premises uh, we will upgrade. On top of that, uh, we have our childcare uh, support uh, that will, will make an enormous difference from the 1st of July, helping women's workforce participation here in the West, as well as the difference already that our cheaper medicines are having here in the cost of living issues. So it's great to be here in the West. It's great to be working with my friend, uh, the Premier, Mark McGowan, and I'll ask him to make some comments and then uh, we're happy to take some questions. Right, thank you so much, Prime Minister. Can I thank the Prime Minister for bringing his entire Cabinet to the Pilbara? It's uh, just a terrific thing. It's a historic thing uh, that the Prime Minister of Australia, the full Cabinet, is going to have a meeting in the Shipping Control Tower, watching uh, the port facilities whilst they're 
engaging in their cabinet deliberations. And uh, what it does is it draws the attention of the whole country to Western Australia and to the resources industry of Western Australia, and most importantly, the people who work in it, who work hard, who do a great job in difficult and hot circumstances and work long hours and produce a lot of the wealth and uh, success that Australia relies upon. Obviously, the mining and resources industry of Western Australia is the strongest in industry in the country. Uh, and it produces huge amounts of revenue that flow to Canberra and obviously go on to support services around the nation, all over the nation. So uh, it's very important that it's appreciated and understood, which I, under, which I know uh, the Prime Minister and his Cabinet do, uh, but this, uh, this uh, demonstration of that support is very important uh, for the entire country. Uh, secondly, um, it's terrific that we're able to make this joint announcement here today. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, an important announcement for the future of the Pilbara and for Western Australia. Uh, the Lumsden, Port, Lumsden Point project will mean uh, that we have common use of facilities and berthing facilities so that we can export in particular lithium uh, and uh, uh, other minerals uh, but also import important equipment and machinery, in particular wind turbines and uh, equipment for renewable energy. So that facility itself will expand the capacity here of the port and make sure that it can diversify into areas that will better support the economy here in the Pilbara and uh, Western Australia. It's a joint funding commitment by the Commonwealth and State. The Commonwealth very generously is putting in $560 million. Uh, the State is putting in around $100 million. It's uh, overall a $660 million project, which is a massive boost uh, for the West Australian economy. Uh, and it shows that this visit to Headland uh, is, not, uh, is, is about substance as well as about showing off uh, to the country what uh, the Pilbara and uh, uh, Western Australia has to offer. So can I thank the Commonwealth for this joint commitment? We've worked cooperatively on it and it will certainly boost and support industry across Western Australia through this joint funding commitment by the State and Commonwealth Government. So uh, I'll hand back to the, uh, to the Prime Minister for questions. Prime Minister, you just met with Thanks. the Indigenous Elders. Yeah. Uh, that didn't come up. Uh, what did come up uh, was issues of housing. Uh, it, they raised issues of, in general, youth uh, be, having somewhere to go uh, at night. They raised issues of school retention and uh, they raised uh, a broad range of issues as well. They were supportive of the constitutional uh, change uh, that will be proposed at the end of the year. Uh, it was a great opportunity and I, can I thank the traditional owners and pay my respects to them uh, for giving us as well the respect of coming and meeting with myself and Senator Dodson. Uh, it was uh, a, a very humbling experience, uh, frankly, to hear from people who have such uh, real world experience uh, on the ground. Uh, it was very constructive. And those well, issues that they raised are obviously Well, they certainly uh, saw uh, the value in one, uh, having recognition in our constitution. Our nation's birth certificate currently doesn't acknowledge the great privilege that we have of sharing this continent with the oldest continuous culture on earth. And uh, secondly, uh, that uh, they want to be heard. And uh, this was an opportunity to, to listen to them, but a structural, body, uh, a voice to Parliament uh, which is enshrined uh, will ensure that over a, a, a long term uh, we can deal uh, with issues that frankly we've tried uh, other ways for 122 years now since Federation uh, decisions made in Canberra. Uh, what uh, we need to do is to make sure that where matters affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, there's a consultative body. Prime Minister, is there a disconnect between the ideals of the voice being debated and what is happening in more remote parts of, of WA and Australia with the housing issues you referred to and the like? And how do you convince and how confident can those elders and those families who are struggling be that listening to the voice will actually result in practical solutions? 
Well, we know that when you consult any group of people about matters that affect them, you will get better outcomes. And that is what The Voice is. Uh, and we know as well from experience that where uh, Indigenous Australians have been directly involved in the design of programs for justice reinvestment, park rangers programs, community health programs, uh, then you get better outcomes. The songs say you haven't listened to on the cashless card, for example. So will what the voice says be heard? Uh, there will be uh, a voice uh, which will be able to articulate uh, the views of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, it's not uh, something that uh, will give uh, a, a right of veto, but it will ensure uh, that where matters directly affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, uh, the questions will be asked, uh, not just by us, but by you, about what the view of the national voice is on particular issues. Prime Minister, the latest report from the Australian energy market operator is warning there's an urgent need for investment in generation, long duration storage and transmission. It's clearly an issue. What more can be done? Well, we need to set up the investment certainty as what is required here. Uh, the Australian energy market operator have been talking about this for a long period of time. The integrated systems plan to bring the grid, uh, the national grid, into the 21st century has been available on their website for year after year after year. The former government didn't act on that at all. So we need to do that. We need to encourage uh, new investment as well uh, in generation. Uh, the truth is that four gigawatts left the system under the former government and one gigawatt went in. If you're having less uh, investment in new uh, energy than you are in energy that's leaving the system with the closure of coal-fired power plants, uh, then you will have these issues, uh, which is why my government is absolutely determined to provide that certainty for investment through the safeguard mechanism. Now, the safeguard mechanism was established under legislation uh, by the Abbott government. It is one thing for the coalition to oppose initiatives and commitments that Labor made in the lead up to the last election. It is absurd that they're opposing their own policy, in spite of the fact that all of uh, the energy market operators, all of uh, industry, be it here in the West, uh, Woodside, BHP, the Minerals Council, are all saying that the safeguard mechanism is the way to go forward. Uh, it's been designed uh, to make sure that uh, we deal with these issues and the coalition that have become the noalition just say no to everything are standing in the way. Well, well, they are concerned. Well, the, the, the coalition can get out of the way and can vote for their own policy. Uh, if you don't have investment certainty, what you'll have is less investment. And that is what has occurred for a decade. We've had a decade of denial and delay, a decade in which uh, the coalition still can't seem to agree that uh, climate change is real and that there is a transition happening uh, in our economy and they seem determined uh, to just say no and the, the price uh, that is paid uh, will be paid by Australian industry, by Australian consumers. Uh, the fact of uh, the lack of investment uh, which has been there is one of the reasons why we were so exposed uh, to international prices. Now here in WA, thanks to the Carpenter Labor government and the, the ongoing support of the McGowan government, there was interventions to make a difference. Now the coalition uh, haven't been anywhere near a any of those measures when, they're in, when they've been in government, but we know because uh, the investors are saying, we want certainty. And that's why the safeguard mechanism legislation is very important. Uh, but the coalition walking away means that the Greens are in a position 
uh, of uh, now trying to uh, exert uh, their influence with some of their propositions, we've said, uh, won't be entertained by the government. The idea that you say there'll be no new investment as a, a dictate from the government rather than leaving things to uh, the market is something that uh, we won't entertain. But we will, of course, have to talk uh, to senators in order to uh, try to get legislation through that's consistent, though, with our policy and consistent with the needs of Australia. Prime Minister, on the, well, just picking up that point you say about now you're having to deal with the Greens, we're here in a mining community. What um, reassurances can you give to mining communities, particularly coal and gas, um, about their future? And, and also, um, on the lifestyle around mines, do you think that there's been cultural change fast enough in the mining sector, particularly around dealing with sexual harassment? Well, the assurance that I can give is the actions of the government. Here we are today announcing a joint funding initiative with WA. It's about expanding the port. It's about expanding the opportunities of our trade. Uh, we're a trading nation. Uh, we do need um, more supply. And uh, I've made that uh, very clear. We need more supply from renewables with storage, but we also uh, need to recognise the role that gas uh, will play uh, as, uh, as, as businesses uh, look to uh, transform. We need to look at uh, new processes too, like hydrogen presents an enormous opportunity. And the great thing about Western Australia is that if you were, if you were designing a state to benefit last century, then you would have had a whole lot of iron ore and you would have had all those resources. Now, that's going to continue for decades to come, but uh, hitting the jackpot is lithium, nickel and these other resources that will continue to be of higher and higher value in the future. And so uh, I think WA is particularly uh, well positioned, particularly well positioned as well to take advantage of green hydrogen. Our vision is uh, clean, cheap energy, powering high value manufacturing with value adding occurring right here, uh, building on the work that the McGowan government is doing in rail manufacturing and other areas and training Australians for those jobs, skilling them up with fee-free TAFE and with uh, our new energy apprenticeships. It's a really positive, optimistic future uh, here in the West, uh, but right throughout Australia. But Part of the driving force is right here. Maybe one more. Have you, broken, have you broken an election promise not to change super, superannuation tax rates by flagging review clamping down on super concessions? That's a big call you've made. Uh, we haven't made any announcements at all. Prime Minister, do you have a warning for any foreign powers seeking to influence Australia's democratic processes? Well, back off. That, that's, we have an important democracy here. Uh, and uh, our, our democracy will entertain uh, both uh, short-term issues that we're dealing with. The long-term issue of superannuation is something that we do need to deal with. My government makes no apologies for pointing out uh, what uh, the future looks like in 10, 20 years' time if there isn't a debate about change. And uh, we are engaged uh, in, in that debate uh, very clearly. The United Nations group that examines the treatment of people in detention in Australia has cancelled its visit. Is that a poor reflection on human rights in Australia? Oh, I'm not aware of uh, of uh, that uh, particular issue. They that weren't granted access to sites in New South Wales and Queensland where people with mental health. Well, well, that's a decision for uh, those uh, those state governments. I, I have a national government uh, to uh, to. To, to run, uh, along with my cabinet colleagues, and I'll, I'll stick to answering about federal issues. The extradition of Rwanda Singh from India. I was going to ask the Premier a question. Sure. Just one more. Well, why don't we let the Prime Minister? Yep. Yeah, sure. The extradition of Rwanda Singh appears to be progressing from India. Does that show uh, good cooperation between India and Australia on matters of justice? Uh, we have very good relations with India. Uh, I met with the Foreign Minister uh, just on Saturday. I, I hosted him and it was a very good discussion about a range of issues. Uh, when we look at this port here, and in particular Western Australia stands 
uh, to greatly benefit from increased economic partnership between Australia and India. I'll be visiting India uh, from the 8th of March. Uh, it will be a really important visit. I'll be taking with me CEOs of more than 25 major companies here in, uh, in Australia from the resources sector, the finance sector, the university sector, information technology, uh, uh, all across the board. Uh, going there. Madeleine King, our Resources Minister, will be uh, travelling with me along with the Trade Minister. And uh, I've already had three meetings with Prime Minister Modi and I really look forward uh, to that. And then I look forward uh, to hosting Prime Minister Modi as well as President Biden and Prime Minister Kashida uh, here in the first half of this year at the Quad Leaders meeting. So hand a, I'll hand it. You're just listening there to the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese who was live there in the town of Port Hedland in WA. That's where Federal Cabinet is meeting today. He was alongside there the WA Premier Mark McGowan.